Actor Nick Nolte, some of L.A.'s bad guys behind bars after falling for bait by L.A.'s finest. A horrific scene at a gas pump. Experts tell us how to keep this from ever happening to you. I don't want to look for that type of person again. And how to make sure your next date is a dream and not a criminal. That's all coming up on the Fox 11, 10 o'clock news. Fox Monday. The holidays are a time for celebration. I was thinking about you last night in bed. I mean, you're dancing. A time for tolerance. I am sorry I insulted your butter cookies, and I'm deeply sorry that my family has money. A time for giving. There's a hotel on Beacon Hill. Get a room, and I'll meet you there at 4 o'clock. Be there for a special holiday Boston public. Mr. Hanson, thank you. Well, I didn't do anything yet. Yes, you have. An all-new episode, 8, 7 Central, Fox Monday. This is fantastic. Kind of smoky and spicy. It's smoked jalapeno pepper. Chipotle. It only happens one breed. Don't miss it. LA's number one choice for news. Fox 11, 10 o'clock news. Good evening. Can't find the bad guys? Make them find you. It's an old sting, but it works. Just ask a bunch of unsuspecting felons and fugitives who tonight are behind bars. Chris Blatchford has a story you'll see only on Fox 11. All right! <laughs> McGonan Grant is feeling good. What? She just won a new CD player. <laughs> but things aren't always as they seem. She came to this Rialto travel agency after getting this brochure in the mail saying she might win a free trip to Las Vegas. Heck, the first 100 callers would even get a prize. But again, things aren't always as they seem. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hi, Debbie. I'm Officer Harden. You're under arrest, man. Within seconds, she's in cuffs. A drunk driving warrant out for her arrest. Oh, my God, please. Jeffrey Rowe. Jeffrey? Hey, congratulations. Who had an outstanding narcotics warrant, was expecting some free Raiders tickets. He, too, got handcuffs instead. It's all part of a sting operation designed to catch Inland Empire felons with outstanding warrants. Detective Chris Heiss. No uses of force. Uh, none of the suspects were, were, you know, hurt in any way, no officer. So it, it was success, it's a total success. More than three dozen accused felons. Hey, congratulations, you're a winner. Were lured in and caught, including nine parolees who were fugitives. Affectionately called Operation Doughboy after the officer who came up with the travel agency idea, the wanted came in smiling. Detective Josh Lindsay says that's the way it was planned. I think we brought in more people than if we would have uh, went out looking for them. However, investigators note we're, we're waiting for them. some who had okay. murder warrants never showed up. But detectives here say if we didn't get them today, we'll hunt them down tomorrow. In Rialto, Chris Blatchford, Fox 11 News. Case closed. Four Riverside police officers who shot and killed Taisha Miller will not face any federal criminal charges. This happened back in 1998. Miller had passed out in her aunt's car. She had a gun in her lap. When Miller woke up, police say she made a move for the gun and officers fired dozens of shots. All four officers were fired but not prosecuted. Miller's family sued, claiming civil rights violations. But today, the U.S. attorney decided there's insufficient evidence to support the charge. Judgment day for the man who brutally killed three women at Yosemite National Park. Today, a judge sentenced Carrie Stainer to die by lethal injection for the murders of 15-year-old Julie Sund, her mother Carol, and Sylvania Peloso, a family friend. Relatives say Stainer got what he deserved. There's some people that we just don't need around, and I do believe that Carrie Stainer is one of those people. Three years ago, Stainer went on a killing spree at Yosemite. He also beheaded Joey Armstrong, a nature guide. Today, Stainer's father said his son was deprived of a fair trial by a, quote, kangaroo court. A judge's warrant actor, Nick Nolte, drive drunk again and you'll go to jail. Today, Nolte got off with probation and mandatory drug counseling. John Schwatter was in court when the sentence was handed down. 7-8, how do you plead to char the charge in count one? A violation of vehicle code section 23152A, driving under the influence of drugs. No contest. Nick Nolte pleads no contest. 
A September booking photo shows the 61-year-old actor after he was arrested and later handcuffed by the CHP for weaving down Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu under the influence of the date rape drug GHB. Arresting officers said Nolte was dazed and drooling when they busted him, but Judge Lawrence Mira says a new report from Nolte's drug counselor is hopeful. In case you're doing very well on this approach to rehabilitation, I'm going to continue that. Outside court, Nolte still won't say how he ended up with GHB in his system. So you didn't know how that, uh, that substance got into your system? It got there. Nolte's attorney has suggested the actor accidentally ingested GHB in one of the weightlifting dietary pills he takes. As camera crews swarmed him outside Malibu court, Nolte was tight-lipped and unsmiling about his brush with the law. Have you learned anything from this whole experience? You can't help but learn something from this experience. <laughs> but before escaping the crush of cameras in a chauffeured luxury car, the actor did say he deeply regretted driving while intoxicated. In Los Angeles, I'm John Schwada, Fox 11 News. Adding more strain on U.S. relations, North Korea announced it is reactivating a nuclear power plant. The facility could help in making nuclear weapons. North Korea says it needs to produce energy because the U.S. cut off fuel oil shipments last month. Those shipments were stopped after North Korea violated a 1994 agreement not to produce nuclear weapons material. The White House calls the decision to reactivate regrettable. Meanwhile, North Korea accused the U.S. of piracy for seizing its ship carrying Scud missiles headed for Yemen earlier this week. The U.S. released the vessel a day later. Now there's evidence Iran is developing nuclear weapons. Commercial satellite photos show two nuclear facilities under construction inside central Iran. Experts say it's suspicious Iran's keeping the site secret. The ambassador says they're I not building a bomb. I can tell you that Iran does not have a nuclear weapons program. However, experts say the sites are similar to those built in Pakistan just before it developed nuclear weapons. 12,000 pages, not enough answers. Tonight, the Bush administration is criticizing Iraq's long report on its weapon systems. The White House says the report does not explain what happened to chemical and biological materials that were missing four years ago, the last time inspectors were there. On the ground, the pace of inspections is picking up. U.N. inspectors rolled out today to six different sites, including a facility that once built Scud missiles. Meantime, U.S. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld is in the Persian Gulf watching what could be a dress rehearsal. Mike Emanuel has that story. As tensions heat up between the U.S. and Iraq, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld and General Tommy Franks tour Qatar. In an interview with Fox News, Secretary Rumsfeld says... The U.S. is not alone in wanting Saddam Hussein to disarm. There is not a day that goes by that another nation in the world doesn't join the, the uh, list of nations who have said that if a coalition of the willing is necessary, we're available, we're with you, we agree with you about the threat. In Kuwait, U.S. soldiers practice for war. These exercises may be more serious than ever with the possibility of war with Iraq on the horizon. These soldiers are very good at what they do. They are at a very high state of training. And I'll let uh, those who uh, might watch what we're doing draw their own conclusions. The U.S. soldiers are learning some of the challenges of military action in the Persian Gulf region. With the protective gear, it's very hot. It's tough to pick up a good sight aim, a good sight picture when you're engaging targets. Meanwhile, with the threat of a possible weapons of mass destruction attack, U.S. officials are preparing smallpox vaccinations. Well, there's really two pieces to it. One is the uh, military side, and, and I have approved the, the use of, of the vaccination for military personnel in an order of priority, starting with first responders and then those who conceivably would be most vulnerable. President Bush is expected to announce the smallpox vaccine plan for civilians. There are potentially nasty side effects, but clearly U.S. officials are concerned about the risk of not taking action. In Washington, Mike Emanuel, Fox News. An American Black Hawk helicopter has crashed in the hills of central Honduras, killing all five U.S. soldiers on board. The chopper went down about 85 miles north of the Honduran capital, Tegucigalpa. This morning, investigators picked through debris at the remote crash site. Military officials say the crew was on a routine training exercise. The crash is being called an accident, but it is under investigation. Heavy rains in the area may have been a factor. 
Looks like we may not be able to witness the first trial of one of the Washington area suspected snipers. Today, a Virginia judge decided to bar TV cameras from the courtroom during the trial of John Allen Muhammad. He says it could compromise the defendant's right to a fair trial. The broadcast media plan to appeal. The judge set a trial date for October 14th. Muhammad, along with John Lee Malvo, are accused of killing 10 people in 13 shootings. Well, it's official flu season is here. Doctors say the first cases are showing up at Southland Hospitals. At Lascos is live in Linwood with some advice on what to do when the flu bug bites. Ben. And John, it started off as a really slow flu season, and now it's really picking up, uh, like ERs across the Southland, like here at St. Francis, the trauma center. And doctors are really worried with all the rain coming this week and early next week that they're going to see a lot of cases of flu-like symptoms. And you don't want to wind up in here, do you? I didn't think so. So there are a few things you can do to stay safe, stay healthy. Doctor's orders. Downtown LA, where people are crowded together. Tis the season to be sick. Horrible, yes. Sneezing, coughing. My chest hurt a little bit, so I think I might have had more than just the flu. It gets pretty bad. I'm usually sick for about a week. And it just knocks you off your feet. That's the flu. And whether it's riding on a packed bus or working in a high-rise office, there is no escape. People are crowded together and they just pass things back and forth more often. You cough or you sneeze and they form little droplets and you inhale those. If you do, it could make you very sick. L.A. County now recording its first local case of the flu virus. It's not predictive of whether we're going to have a light or a heavy flu season. The fact that it's late, we could still have a much heavier season than last year or it could be light again. But local hospitals are ready, just in case it hits you. You probably should stay home from work so you don't pass it out to other people. You drink a lot of fluids, uh, get some rest. And forget about aspirin. That's right, no aspirin. The doctor's prescription is plain old Tylenol and something else. But the best way to prevent influenza, the best way to prevent the flu is get the flu shot. And, and the next question is probably going to be who should get it? Well, and, who should get it? Though? Right. This is about anybody. Anybody, doctors say when it comes to that flu shot, you're talking about 65 and older. And for the young kids, two and younger, young babies, really, they say that's the best way to avoid having any problems. They also say you don't want to waste around, wait any time, because once you have the shot, it still takes 10 to 14 days until it really takes effect and keeps you safe and healthy. You won't get the flu. For now, we're live in with Ed Lasko's Fox 11 News. Well, you know, the weather can play a big part in whether we get sick or not, and we are in for a big change. Rick Dickert is here to tell us all about that. Rick? That's right, Christine. We saw sunshine and temperatures in the 70s today, but that is all going to change. We're tracking a couple of very strong Pacific storms trailing across the Pacific Ocean into the Pacific Northwest. They're already feeling the effects with heavy winds and rain and snow in the high country. Check out this video from Bellingham, Washington, just north of Seattle, and you can see the high surf there. Heavy surf advisories in effect and wind gusts upwards of 60 miles an hour and snow higher up. At about 3,500 feet, we're going to travel further down the coast into Oregon now, into Cannon Beach, and they, too, are feeling the effects of this first strong winter storm. And check it out. High winds there, heavy surf as well, heavy surf advisories in effect. High wind warnings have been downgraded to watches, but they're still expecting lots of rain for the next five days. Now, that frontal system is trailing south into the Bay Area already, starting to rain there in San Francisco. This first system not going to affect us, but the one behind it will. And we are expecting rain sometime Saturday night through early Sunday, and then yet a stronger storm on Monday and Tuesday, perhaps one to two inches of rain, and the surf will be high here locally as well. Coming up, we'll have more on the storm and the five-day forecast, which has a lot of raindrops on it. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Rick. I, I like how we have this break for our Southgate parade on Sunday. So no far. Parade on Sunday afternoon so far. Yeah. All right. Hope All right. that holds up. Yeah. Well, a trip to the pump nearly ends in death. A man catches fire while gassing up, but experts say this is not a freak accident. Coming up, how to keep it from happening to you. I'm Jane Yamamoto in Brentwood, where coffee drinkers have healthy alternatives. It is especially important for young people. I'll tell you why coming up in a live report. And fire experts say this type of blaze could consume a room in a matter of minutes. The dangers of space heaters coming up. Fox 11 News, sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at MBUSA.com.
It may never be this easy to get into a Mercedes, but we're working on it. Come in today to the Mercedes-Benz year-end celebration, offering more models than ever. Going on now with your Mercedes-Benz dealer. I just love this. Starting at 70 bucks, you'll find our shoes fit your budget almost as well as your feet. Styles. PG-13, back in theaters Friday. You're watching Fox 11 News with John Beard and Christine Devine. Look carefully at the man in the back of the pickup truck in the security video. The gas can he's filling explodes in a ball of flames as a man runs away. With his clothes on fire, he rolls on the ground as people at the station rush over to help. Terrifying pictures, of course, but that man's alive tonight thanks to the quick work of an Air Force sergeant who risked his own life to help. Hector Contreras has a closer look at what happened. One minute he was filling up, the next he's on fire. This dramatic security camera video at Lackland Air Force Base caught it all. Fire investigators say the man was refueling gas cans in the bed of his pickup when static electricity from his body sparked the fire. Sergeant Ed Jones saw the whole thing happen. He even burned his hands trying to put the flames out. Uh, I took off my, my BDU top and I um, put it on top of the man to try and smother the flames. When it's time to refuel, many of us just put the nozzle in and go back into the car for money or keys. It's thin when our body creates static electricity with the seat. That static electricity can cause an explosion when you go back to remove the nozzle. You should touch the vehicle somewhere to ground yourself. Chief Boss says touching the metal of your car it's will expensive. kill the static charge. Danny Wong had no idea static electricity at the pump could kill, even though many gas pumps have warnings posted. I knew that I was turning off the engine, turning off cell phones, and turning all that stuff off before. In the meantime, Sergeant Jones doesn't think of himself as a hero, just a man whose instinct to help took over. I was um, very scared at the time. But um, I'm just glad that the guy was all right. I'm told he's going to recover, and that was fantastic to hear. And tonight, the retired Air Force officer is listed in satisfactory condition, but he does have burns to almost 20% of his body. An accused killer has been brought to justice after more than a decade on the lam. Robert Garcia has been arrested for a 1991 shooting that left a 14-year-old girl dead. An investigator with the Orange County DA's office tracked Garcia down. He's accused of killing Lilia Guevara during a gun battle that broke out at a party in Tustin. The ex-convict charged with causing this deadly crash in Eagle Rock will stay in prison for the rest of his life. William Penelian, who was carried away that day on a gurney, was sentenced today to more than 129 years behind bars. He was convicted of killing a man last May at the end of a police pursuit. Penelian had also been convicted of committing a crime spree, including about two dozen robberies. They say they were protecting the public, but a Beverly Hills law firm is accused of extorting money from hundreds of local small businesses. Trisha Takasugi explains. This is an extortion. This is a blackmail. That's what restaurant owner Sam Wong says of this 135-page lawsuit in which hundreds of San Gabriel Valley businesses like his are being sued. The Trevor Law Group in Beverly Hills filed the suit supposedly on the public's behalf and cites various health code or business violations as the basis. But small business owners see it as an abuse of the law. They definitely twisted the law for their personal gain. They extort money from you. Some have already been approached about out-of-court settlements, which they believe are just an attempt at extortion. If you can settle up, settle up with us today, it's 950 If you settle up with us next week, it's going to be $1,400, you know? That's, that's ridiculous. It goes, that goes to show you that, in fact, that's what they're really after, lining up their own pockets. Assemblywoman Judy Chu believes largely minority-owned, mom-and-pop type shops are the targets because they're vulnerable. Many of the restaurants are indeed uh, immigrant. Uh, they are owned by people who may not have a familiarity with English. Chu is calling for an investigation to stop what she says is an unethical use of blanket lawsuits. We have uh, filed uh, uh, complaints with the attorney general, with the district attorney, with the state bar association for their ethical behavior. There is actually a pattern. They've done this to the auto repair business, to nail salons. Now they're doing it to the restaurants. The Trevor Law Group, located in this Beverly Hills building, did not return calls from Fox 11 News. In the San Gabriel Valley, Trisha Takasugi, Fox 11 News. California was robbed, but not for as much as the governor thinks. 
federal agency that keeps watch on energy prices, now says power companies overcharged California by nearly $2 billion during the energy crisis. Governor Davis claims the state was gouged by nearly $9 billion. Davis says the feds aren't playing fair. California won't get the $2 billion back because the state still owes more than that for power it purchased under the gun. More and more L.A. kids have a serious problem that could endanger their lives. A new study says one out of every four is overweight. That's the worst average in all of California. Jane Yamamoto is live in Brentwood with more. Jane. Well, John, we are at the Coffee Bean here in Brentwood. This is a place where a lot of young people hang out tonight. Here they are busy serving up mochas and frappuccinos. And coffee drinkers here, they have a choice of non-fat milk and sugar-free drinks. This is critical for young people because a new study shows that teen obesity is now an epidemic. Fast foods high in fat, juice drinks high in sugar, and vending machines filled with candy and chips. Temptations many teens can't resist. Cheap and it tastes pretty good. You think it's it is a problem for kids your age? Yeah. Yep. What's the problem? They're gaining too much weight and they're causing their own death. Young people struggling with their weight, like 18-year-old Adriana Jones. At five foot three, she weighs just over 290 pounds. Despite diets and hitting the gym four times a week, the weight has not come off. And she says it's already triggering other health problems. Like being a diabetic, having high blood pressure. And you have Mm-hmm. I have both. Adriana is part of a growing population of young people overweight and not physically fit. A study focusing on more than one million children in California public schools found that young people in L.A. County had the highest percentage of overweight children between 6 and 19 years old. It is an epidemic, about 30 percent of the population being affected. A pediatric endocrinologist at Miller Children's Hospital says lack of physical exercise is feeding the problem. What's shocking is um, some of our students that come from um, public schools are saying their physical education is one time a week, which used to be daily. What is your fear? Of having a heart attack. Now, in addition to Adriana, I spoke to a couple of other parents, one with a daughter who's overweight, another with a daughter who is underweight. They both agree on one thing, that exercise is key in order to curb the teen weight problem. Live in Brentwood, Jane Yamamoto, Fox 11 News. A new study finds anti-gay bullying is widespread in schools across the country. 93% of teens surveyed say they hear anti-gay comments used toward gay students or those perceived to be gay once in a while. 51% say they encounter it every day, but only 5% say they would stand up for the bullying victims. The National Mental Health Association, which conducted the poll, says anti-homosexual bullying seriously risks the victim's education and mental health. Some holiday cheer today for a few kids who won't be home for Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! There he is, Santa Claus, Merry paying a special Christmas. visit to Orthopedic Hospital this morning. He handed out toys to some of the younger patients, then gave out gifts to other needy kids. The presents were part of a toy drive sponsored by the CHP. More big trouble for a Roman Catholic cardinal. His job's on the line, and now he's being summoned by the law, the latest in the church sex abuse scandal. Then buying a lot of battery-operated gifts this holiday season? Fox 11 wants to know. Finds out which ones work best on everything from toys to high-tech gadgets. I'm Christina Gonzalez, live in Pasadena. How far would you go to find out the truth about the person you are dating? Now, I may be able to help you with that, so stay tuned. Fox 11 News, sponsored by Paramount Pictures, Star Trek Nemesis, now playing everywhere, rated PG-13. I can feel everything you feel. It's as if part of me had been stolen. Star Trek Nemesis is spectacular. Even if you aren't a science fiction fan, you'll love it. Set a course for Earth. Kill everything. Action, intensity, and loads of fun. Gene Shalit says it's exciting with an inventive twist as good as Star Wars and full of surprises with a brilliant ending. Four Star Wars. At Macy's. airlines from the LA area to Las Vegas for just $19 and to Oakland for $29 each way. You are now free to move about the country. A bounty hunter is stalking the crew of Serenity. What do you want? There's nobody can help you. Firefly. Friday at 8 on Fox 11. Can John Doe catch a killer? This guy knows my exact weaknesses. Who's even smarter than him? John Doe. Friday at 9 on Fox 11. 
Labor strike by Venezuelan oil workers boils over. Hundreds held a loud protest in Caracas today after President Hugo Chavez fired four dissident executives from the state-run oil monopoly. He's trying to break the strike that's entering its 12th day. Protesters say they will not return to work until Chavez resigns. The walkout has unsettled markets worldwide and created concerns in the U.S. about heating oil supplies for the winter. Offensive and wrong, with those tough words, President Bush has stepped into the controversy surrounding Senator Trent Lott. The president took the extraordinary step of publicly chastising a fellow Republican leader. Lott is taking heavy flack for praising Senator Strom Thurmond in a way that sounded like support for segregation. Any suggestion that the segregated past was acceptable or positive is offensive and it is wrong. Recent comments by Senator Lott do not reflect the spirit of our country. He has apologized and rightly so. Lott apologized again today and said he agrees with the president. Still, many Republicans want Lott to do more and some Democrats want him to resign. Boston's Cardinal Bernard Law may be hours away from resigning, and he has been ordered to answer questions now from a grand jury. The Cardinal is at the Vatican, where tomorrow reporters say he may offer his resignation to Pope John Paul II. Meantime, the Attorney General of Massachusetts says a grand jury is investigating the church abuse scandal, but he says church leaders are stonewalling the investigation. Needless numbers, of, of countless numbers of, of, of children were harmed um, in tremendous pain. Uh, and anguish that they have suffered over a year. They're, they're the victims in this case because the church cared more about itself than about kids, and that's wrong. Cardinal Law and seven bishops have been subpoenaed. The cardinal flew to Rome the day after he was served. Another former priest in the L.A. area will have to answer charges of sexual abuse. Police arrested George Michael Miller on Monday. Today, his first appearance in court. Miller served at a church in Pacoima before retiring. Prosecutors say he molested two boys for more than a decade. It will be held on half a million dollars bail. He is the sixth priest to be charged in L.A. County. Experts are calling this a major breakthrough in airline safety. Investigators think a spark ignited vapors in the fuel tank of TWA Flight 800. That jet exploded in midair over the ocean, killing 230 people on board. A similar fuel tank explosion happened in Thailand two years ago. Now the FAA says... A new device can be installed on jets that will neutralize fuel tank vapors. Boeing says it will soon begin testing the device. A U.S. missile defense system test fails. The military launched an intercontinental missile with a dummy warhead from Central California yesterday. Minutes later, an interceptor rocket blasted off from the Pacific Ocean. But the rocket failed to separate from its booster, missing the ballistic missile by hundreds of miles. The $80 million test the third of its kind to fail since 1999. And a setback for the European Space Agency. This Ariane 5 rocket exploded minutes after launch from French Guiana yesterday. The unmanned rocket was carrying a payload of two multi-million dollar satellites. This is the fourth time in a decade and a half that the Ariane 5 has failed. And this latest incident could put that entire rocket program on hold indefinitely. Here's another kind of space danger right here on Earth. It's a warning about portable space heaters. The Chicago Fire Department put on this demonstration to show just how quickly disaster can happen. If you leave a blanket on a space heater for just a short time, before you know it, the entire room can go up in flames. Firefighters would rather you didn't use space heaters at all. But if you must, make sure you also have smoke detectors and a carefully thought out escape plan. Some of the Christmas gifts you're buying this year probably need batteries, but you know which ones will work best for you, or is there any difference? Box 11 wants to know. This is a nickel cadmium battery pack, which is recommended with all these toys because toys will be running uh, faster and uh, as soon as the batteries are dead, you can recharge them over and over and get more value out of your batteries. Battery tip number one from a senior manager at Radio Shack. Nickel cadmium battery packs for big toys that drain batteries in a big, fast way. For some of your other holiday gifts, like portable CD players, alarm clocks or calculators, things that drain batteries more slowly, you'll do just fine with regular disposable alkaline batteries. Who to come rule of Radio Shack doesn't think you'll find much difference between brands of batteries. He recommends the so-called high drain batteries if Santa's going digital. High drain alkaline batteries are good for most digital products, 
including cameras, digital cameras, uh, PDAs, um, handheld computers, games. The Rolls-Royce of high drain batteries are the lithium batteries. They cost more, but our Radio Shack guy thinks you wind up saving money in the long run. It claims it lasts up to five times longer than alkaline batteries in digital cameras. Now, how about rechargeable batteries? The alkaline ones will be fine with things you don't use all the time. Just know that their run times shorten with each charge, and those batteries only last for about 25 charge cycles. Nickel metal hydrate rechargeables are better for remote control toys. The most expensive batteries, but you get 300 to 600 charge cycles. And you recharge over and over, and that's very cost effective. By the way, don't bother storing alkaline batteries in the refrigerator to try to make them last longer. Consumer Reports put that one to the test and found it made little difference. Here's one hail of a day in Houston. Several thunderstorms brought rain, hail, and high winds to Texas, causing all kinds of problems during the morning rush hour. The storm rolled in from the south Texas coast, drenching the area with nearly three inches of rain. Decking the halls is serious business in Huntington Harbor. The annual Cruise of Lights is now underway. It's so pretty. Every year, the city dresses up its opulent waterfront homes in some amazing light displays. You can then hop aboard a pleasure craft and take in the show. This year marks the event's 40th anniversary. And if you're going out there tomorrow, bring your raincoat, because Rick Dickert's saying we might have some rain tomorrow. Yeah, I'm always going to do that. Weekend. I've seen one of the Marine Del Rey, but Newport's going to be And those shots from Sky Fox, which are great from that perspective. Sorry, I yeah. missed that. But yeah, rain on the way, but we saw a gorgeous day today across Southern California. Strong high pressure produced sunshine and mild temperatures well into the 70s. Right now, we're cooling off, though, under partly cloudy skies. We may see some fog out there as well. Low to mid 50s. At this hour, 53 degrees in Ontario. Good evening, Van Iser, 51, 53 in Long Beach. Downtown warm to 71 degrees today. It's 54 at this hour. Humidity 74% and winds are calm. For tonight, look for some areas of fog, otherwise partly cloudy and cool temperatures with readings into the lower 40s in the coolest valleys, 49 degrees downtown. Again, just some middle and high level clouds from that first weather system. Valleys, 42 to 48 degrees, coast 49 to 51. And tomorrow, a mixture of clouds and sun. That first frontal system just going to produce some middle and high level clouds. No rain. We will see some fog in the morning as well. Slightly cooler temperatures with the clouds and a high of 68 degrees. Well, we've heard a lot about El Nino. And how is that coming into play with this weather pattern? Well, we're watching the central equatorial Pacific warmer than normal water across this region. And that warm water, we cause, call it positive sea surface temperature anomalies, is going to fuel the southern branch of the jet with additional energy and moisture. These systems that we're watching moving into the west coast tonight. Here's the first one, an area of low pressure and a cold front. Wind, rain, snow, and high surf. We showed you already it's raining up in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, and southward into the Bay Area. Rain falling there as well. And they're going to get quite a bit of it. Rain for the next five days, in fact, as a series of weather systems move into the west coast. Here's again the, the first frontal band, the rain spreading off the Monterey Bay. Just some clouds off of Southern California. No rain from this system, but the rain will begin Saturday night and continue into Sunday morning. Tomorrow should still be a pretty nice day. Temperatures will be slightly cooler with readings 60s at the coast, upper 60s to maybe low 70s in the warmest valleys, 68 degrees downtown, 69 in Anaheim. Inland Empire communities will warm to about 70 degrees as well. Big Bear, 52 degrees. And speaking of the high country, here is your snow report. Could get a couple inches of fresh powder and more snow Monday and Tuesday. There's a five day again. Clouds and sun Friday, Saturday. We introduce a chance of rain Saturday night into early Sunday morning. And then another stronger system Monday and Tuesday, perhaps an inch or two of rain. Wow. But the parade looks like it'll be dry. It will be okay right. Sunday afternoon, hopefully. Week. All right, Rick, All right. thank you very much. Look what wandered into town looking. Well, let's just uh, do this. Uh, yeah, suspect uh, getaway temp is all washed up. We'll show you how cops use water as their weapon to get their man. And did America's Idol break the rules in the big competition? Tell you about the music Kelly Clarkson may have been making before the hit show. Whoa! Hey, uh, stop the music. Guys, everyone stop. We don't need all this. Kias are already a great value, so we got good deals on top of good deals here. Like 2,000 cash back on a Spectra and 1,000 cash back on Rio. Plus our 10 year warranty. What is that? It's a sales monkey. Visit your Southern California Kia retailers. Hurry, offer ends soon. How do you feel when you don't work out? How do you feel when you do? 
At 24 Hour Fitness, whatever your goals are, we can get you there. And it's all designed to make you feel great from the inside out. Free enrollment, free 12 months on a prepaid 12 month membership. Call today. It's the way we make you feel. We have a wonderful customer here at Walmart who is also the town Santa. He came up with an idea called Ho Ho Express. Santa raises money throughout the year with help from us here at Walmart. These are children that might not have any presents under the tree. They could spend their money on themselves, but most of the time they buy for their family. I got my mom a candle. It's them being able to put something under the Christmas tree for them to open on Christmas Day when they wouldn't have anything. I believe in Santa. It's just wonderful to give them a Christmas like that. I know he's real. This holiday season, it's time to get rolling. Because Singular is changing the world of wireless by offering 1,000 anytime minutes for $39.99 and letting you keep the minutes you don't use from month to month. It's called Rollover. It's big. And it's only from Singular Wireless. 1,000 anytime minutes, and every one of them has rollover. Now take and send pictures with this cool camera phone. Singular Wireless. Fox 11 Entertainment Report, sponsored by Singular Wireless. Introducing Singular Rollover. They're your minutes. Did Kelly break the rules to become the American Idol? Three songwriters say they signed Kelly Clarkson to a record deal before the Idol auditions. Now, if that's true, that would be completely against the show's rules. The songwriters say that they recorded several songs with Clarkson that were supposed to be on her debut album, but they say she walked out on the deal to try out in the American Idol competition. Four local high school marching bands got some momentum rolling tonight for a new movie. They performed outside the Magic Johnson Theater in the Crenshaw District. These talented musicians are from Banning, Crenshaw, Compton, and Morningside High Schools. The event kicked off tonight's screening of the new movie, Drumline. It's a comedy about a Harlem street drummer who enrolls in a Southern University. 20th Century Fox hosted the event, and that movie opens tomorrow. Jennifer Lopez, J-Lo, or Jenny from the Block, by any name, her new movie, Made in Manhattan, makes you wonder if art might imitate life. That's it. Put this stuff back. What are you doing? Oh, not till you try it on. I can't try on her clothes. Jennifer Lopez is a hotel maid mistaken for a wealthy socialite in Made in Manhattan. He thinks I'm a guest. This could be bad. Oh, don't tell me you fall for the guy. It's complicated. Seems like a dream come true until the paparazzi join in. Oh my God, 11 o'clock by the tree. What? Yeah, I think um, there's a little bit of life imitating art there. Who's this? You know, dealing with criticism, tabloids, and photographers is what she's become accustomed to. I just take it with a grain of salt and know that it's part of the territory, and it's something that you just get used to. You and me can't go anywhere beyond this evening. I just can't. Well, then you should have worn a different dress. Whether or not she ends up with her handsome co-star is no big deal. She has recently titled Sexiest Man Alive, Ben Affleck, to share her dreams. It was like no, a no-brainer to me. Um, I think he was more, you know, he's, he has a good sense of humor about it, and I think he's flattered as well. I let him think that I was staying in the suite, not cleaning it. I'm the maid, Ty. Ma, I hate to break it to you, but I don't think he's after your money. I can't believe you said that. Made Manhattan his theaters nationwide tomorrow. The price of partying could be going up. We'll tell you about a plan that could make that margarita or martini a bit more costly. I'm Christina Gonzalez from Pasadena with some of the things people are finding out about the people they're dating. And he was married. <laughs> Didn't tell me he was married. How to find out coming right up. And I'm Rick Garcia. Could he be the next Magic Bird and Michael all rolled into one? You'll see the top high school player in the country. Plus, it ain't easy being green. Sean Green steps into a video game near you when we come back. We go to do not have a good selection of gifts on Christmas Eve. Walmart always seems to have a lot of things in stock and waiting for us to buy. Stocking stuffer, stocking stuffer. Walmart has everything. I know I can come in here and find what I need, even at the last minute. Exactly. It's a nice handbag. How do I look? Get everything you need, get it done, and wrap it up. That's fun. <laughs>
Want big, meaty taste? Go to a Subway and try a hot pastrami sub, traditional beef piled high. Or try the carnita sub, oven roasted pork marinated to perfection. You get a half pound of meat on a foot long, it's a big decision. Subway, eat fresh. You look last minute to get a new suit. We offer 24 hour tailoring upon request. So relax, we got you covered. Men's Warehouse. You're gonna like the way you look. I have a word for a killer clown stalks Bart. Bart! He's just a little shy because I've tried to kill him so many times. The Simpsons. Next on Fox 11. Yeah? Remember, the longer we sit here, the less time you spend in school. <laughs> so a lot, little he knows slow, how to talk yeah. to kids. Tim yeah. Allen, who also knows all about home improvement, was the natural choice to introduce a big Hollywood improvement. It's a brand new park on Selma Avenue, 10,000 square feet of playgrounds, picnic tables, and beautiful green space. Ellie spent a million dollars on that park, which is in the perfect spot to serve hundreds of kids from the neighborhood schools. Some cute new arrivals at the San Diego Zoo. Take a look. They may not be as cuddly as, well, they're, would you call them cute? Mm, cute, not cuddly. <laughs> the Visaya and Wardy pigs were born at the zoo December 1st. These babies, um, they're native to the Philippines, and they're one of the world's most endangered large animals. 16 of the pigs have been born since the zoo started the breeding program early this year. Keepers say the piglets are both males. Well, they're cute when they're little. They are cute. <laughs> Love them. That's it for the Fox 11 10 o'clock news. Thanks for watching. The Simpsons is next. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow morning. Fox 11 morning news starting at 530. Thanks for watching tonight.